to sum it up, he is wonderful. Said, Alleluia. Salvation. Honor and power. He is wonderful. I think of all the things that God has done and what God is to me and what comes to mind is as Deacon Kirby says, God is dot, 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 dot. Because there's so many things that can fall into place that would characterize God. As the songwriter said, he is wonderful. God is. Amen. Let us bow our heads. Dear Heavenly Father, as we so humbly approach your holy throne of grace, O oh God, Father, thanking you and praising you for all that you have done, for all that you are doing, and for all that you have plans to do. Father, we thank you for being the great I am, and beside thee there is none other. Father, in so many words, you are wonderful. Father, we just can't tell it all. Father, we thank you for your goodness and for being better to us than we have been to our own selves. Father, we thank you for thinking so much of us that you took time out and you woke us up this morning. For that, we can say thank you. Father, you put food on our table. For that, we can say thank you. You put a roof over our head. For that, we can say thank you. Father, you put food on our table, clothes on our back. Father, we have so much to be thankful for. Father, we thank you most of all, O oh God, Father, that you loved mankind so much that you would give your only begotten son, Jesus. Father, and we thank you for the willingness of mind that he had, that he would come down and live the life, and then after that, die the death. And after that, to conclude it, he rose again on the third day. For that, we can say thank you. Father, we thank you, O oh God, for your man and woman servant, elder and sister, Miss Shaw. We thank you for their preachings and their teachings. Father, we thank you for our present leadership, Elder Howard. Father, we thank you for this thy people, O oh God, Father, which is so great. Father, we pray that you might remember your word as it comes forth today, O oh God. Father, that it might go from breast to breast, that it might go from heart to heart, that it might go from the East Coast all the way to the West Coast, O oh God. Father, to the end that you might be the one that gets all of the glory, that you might be the one that gets all of the honor, and that you, O oh God, might be the one that gets all of the praise in our lives. Father, this is our desire and our prayer at this hour, and we will be very careful not to forget to give thy name and praise. Amen. Amen. We say unto you all, good afternoon, and may God bless you all. Thank God truly for this day for truly this is the day that the Lord hath made and we will rejoice and be glad in it thank God truly for God being good all the time and truly all the time God is good thank God for his loving kindness his tender mercies that he renews to us every day thank God truly for his only begotten son, Jesus, whom he sent down to die on that cruel cross of Calvary so that man, woman, boy, and girl might have a right to make it into the kingdom of heaven. We thank God truly for his man and woman servant, elder and sister Mishal. We thank God for their preachings and their teachings, for the inheritance that they left behind, which was a knowledge of God's word. We thank God truly for our present leadership, Elder Howard, give an honor to him, to the First Lady, give an honor to the deacons that are assembled, ministers of the gospel, to the saints of the Most High. We say unto you all, good afternoon, and may God bless you all. Thank God for the scroll that reads, obedience, love, reverence, and respect. It is first to God, and then to leadership, and then to one another. Thank God truly for my wife of eight years, thank God truly for 
as she said, our good times and our bad times, smiles and frowns, tears and plenty of sunshine, cloudy days and sunshine. Through it all, thank God truly for carrying us through it all. Thank God truly for the celebration that we had on this past weekend for all of those who took time out of their busy schedules to attend and not only attend for uh, the extra work that you all put into it. It's truly appreciated. Thank God truly for you all greatly. Thank God truly for our children that he's blessed us with. Thank God truly for the, uh, the inspiration that they are to us. Thank God truly for the house that he's blessed us with, jobs, transportation, back and forth to the jobs. Truly God is great and greatly to be praised. Thank God for the sparks from the anvil, which is found on page number three in your programs. First one starts off in saying, if you entertain sympathy for wrong, wrong will overtake you. If you entertain sympathy, you are sympathetic when it comes down to someone wrong, doing wrong, then as it says, wrong will overtake you. As it says, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. So make sure that you are not becoming sympathetic when it comes down to wrongdoing, but always stand for righteousness. Number two says, I don't want to be so merciful that I'll encourage wrong, nor so hard that I'll discourage a wrongdoer. So very true. You don't want to be so merciful that you encourage wrongdoing. That's the thing that you don't want to do is encourage wrongdoing. And sometimes people uh, may think that you are being merciful, and by being merciful, they think that it's okay to do this and okay to do that. No, we never want to find ourselves encouraging wrongdoing because wrongdoing is of the devil. It says, nor so hard that I'll discourage a wrongdoer. We always want to try and win the lost soul, to win the weak one. As Elder Mishaw said, there's three classes in the church. You got the strong, you got the weak, and you got the wicked. The strong is there to lift up the weak, and the wicked is there They're trying its best to bring down the weak. So as it says, nor so hard that I'll discourage a wrongdoer. Yes, they may be wrong in their doings, but we don't want to discourage them. We want to encourage them to try better. Uh, that it's not hard, as people say, to serve God. It's easy. Number three says, if you are not with the game, everything you do is wrong in their judgment. If you're not with the game, they talk about these little clicks that they have. As I said, if you're not with the gang, everything you do is wrong in their judgment. They're going to point their fingers at you because you're not in that group with them. But just remember one thing, that man doesn't have a heaven or a hell to put you in. As the scripture teaches us, fear God who can kill the body, and then after that, cast your soul into hell's fire. That's who we ought to fear. Thank God truly for that. On the reverse side, it says, whenever you graduate from a life of wrongdoings to the life above the doings of your past, there is always going to be the need of a greater commitment to God. Because there is the accuser who stands to accuse you before God, day and night, of the wrong that you've done. So very true. When you graduate from the life of doing the bad, of doing the wrong that you were doing, and to the life that is pleasing and acceptable in the eyesight of God, the accuser is there to try and bring you back down. It's like we said, the, the three classes in the church, the strong, the weak, and the wicked. So after you get to the point of not being wicked and you become 
become weak. The wicked man don't like